Seattle U Red Hawks in the black road unis with the red trim. And we are ready to get the 2024-2025 season underway from here in the Emerald City, the Battle of Seattle between these two campuses just a few miles apart. And right away, a turnover. Taking it away is Candy Edopaiba. The lefty triggering the three to Mia Strickland, and that one is off. And right off the bat here, at least, we're seeing the Huskies push the pace, wanting to move the ball in transition. Delaya Daniels, a beautiful finish inside, showing off the mix of shots and the ways that she can finish inside. Always nice to hit your first shot of the season. Daniels averaging just under 12 points per game last season. Gets the first shot of the season to go. Christina Bryant up and under. And the rebound from the newcomer, Tyra Eke out of Madrid, Spain. Now Ladine, ball on the ground and gets impeded. Foul on the floor. And Tyra Eke entering the starting lineup for Tina Langley. Remember the Huskies return four starters like we mentioned just a few moments ago. And this is a team that beat four top 25 AP opponents last season. They're returning a lot of strength. And Seattle U on the other side, a lot of new faces. Just two returning players and only one in Juliana Walker that actually played last year. As Sheridan Liggett, Liggett did not play medical redshirt. Seattle U in a zone. Shot clock winding down. Six on the clock and it's Sellers who triggers it. Daniels with the O board and now Ladine in traffic. Gives the Huskies another chance and she draws her second foul. Here early in this one. The Huskies are a bigger team. I know Seattle, you wanted to get bigger. They added length. That's what Skylar Young told us, said, has said in his second year. He wanted to get longer, but Washington is still bigger. Got to dominate the boards. So one foul apiece, one against Rodriguez, one against Strickland. Crossover by Sellers. As Dub trying to figure out where the shots will come against this zone. Now Ladine kicks it to Sellers, open from the corner, no good. And the rebound ripped away by Rodriguez. And a great test early on as Seattle is going to run his own. Getting out and pushing tempo, drawing the foul. Taisia Kazlova, the grad transfer out of Moscow, Russia. Yes, he went to Dayton last year in Maryland. Before that, won a Big Ten championship with Maryland and got minutes on that team. But as I was saying right before that, we knew Seattle U was going to run a lot of zone. Coach Young has said that this year. Washington thinks they've improved quite a bit from the three-point land. And Tina Langley saying that she's got some really consistent shooting this year. They've worked their tails off in the offseason. Against a zone, you want to hit those threes. We'll see it tonight. And the second free throw is good. So a 2-1 ball game here early. Hannah Steins, quick trigger three is true. Beautiful shot. Ready had her feet set in transition again. Washington wants to play a little faster this year. They've got some athletes to do it. Steins hit 37 threes a year ago. Three ball from Seattle U. That was Kazlova short on the try and now out and running. Hitting the gas and the bucket from Tyra Eke. And a timeout on the floor as Eke beat everybody down for that wide open two. So Tina Langley and the Huskies. Latara King on her right. Lauren Schwartz on the left might remember her. And then Aaliyah Goodman, an outstanding point guard for Oregon State. Spent some time at Duke on the coaching staff there and is now part of the coaching staff here in Seattle. So the coaching staff for Tina Langley changing a little bit. And nice when Lauren Schwartz, nobody knows Tina Langley's system better than Lauren Schwartz. She was with her at Rice for several years, came to Washington, played with her again for several years. 
and really was the clutch player at the end of games. Well, it's nice to not lose her, right? You lose her in terms of your starting lineup, but she still has the wisdom. She's still a player that all those four returning starters can come to and ask questions, and the younger players can do it as well. Well, that will certainly be a key for Washington this season if they want to make a move back to the NCAA tournament. They've been in the postseason the last two years in the WBIT last year. Excuse me, two seasons ago, it was a run all the way to the WNIT Final Four. They'd won four games in a row in the postseason. And then last year, made it to the WBIT. This was Eke out and running. Savia Sellers with a good find in transition. And so nice for Washington to have size and depth at that post position with Tyra running the floor. She's an athlete. She's long, averaged. Uh, at Eastern Michigan. She came from Eastern Michigan, averaged nine and a half points, but she also led the MAC in blocked shots. It's almost like they're getting a different version of a Delea Daniels, but a little bit, there's a lot of similarities between their games. Well, and the good news for Delea Daniels is that she can move outside and turn and face and use her athleticism in different ways. So with Eke, uh, with Eke rather, She's going to be playing the five in a lot of situations at six foot three, and Delia Daniels can show her versatility out there, turning and facing. And she's made big strides in her versatility, according to Tina Langley. Yeah, worked really hard in the off season. Worked on her three point shot. We saw some warm ups, and it looks really good. She's always been a player that can hit the mid range, but she's been more tentative shooting the three. I think she's going to shoot a lot this year. The lefty drive from Kaslova off the rim. And a good push. Ladine feet set. Money from three. Another good setup by Sellers. This is fun to watch. I mean, you saw the fastest outlet pass I've seen in a long time. I mean, Tyra getting it out to Savia. Savia pushing quickly. And your shooters are ready to shoot behind the three-point line. This could be a deadly kind of situation for Seattle U if they can't get to those shooters in transition. Olivia Anderson, oh, excuse me, no, that's uh, Eke again, defensively. Clock, shot clock winding down and a good defensive possession for Washington as Liggett missed everything on the three attempts. And both these teams trying to figure out who they are. Neither of them have really played full speed against a high level division one opponent. So the speed of the game, the pace of the game, both teams are gonna adjust to. Daniels, nice feed down low to Brenna McDonald, the 6'3 grad transfer from Yale, but she couldn't knock it in. This Husky defense has been stifling here to start this game. Not a lot of good looks, and that one also off the mark. Ladine tracks down the long miss. And that's what they were so good at. Ever since Tina Langley stepped in the building, field goal percentage Ooh, defense. Ooh, that Hezzy was nice <laughs> from Daniels. A little shake and bake, but so close to the rim, too. That's, I just love her touch around the rim, no matter where she is. She's gotten so good at putting it in the net. Trying to create some space off the front rim on the attempt. And again, the Huskies out and running. A good catch from Daniels. Sellers, three ball, off the mark, tracked down by McDonald, comes up with it again. Stein's deep three. And again, another offensive rebound. Washington has owned the glass here to start this game. See how much they're getting it inside and out, too, off of these offensive rebounds. They're getting in the key and pushing out. The penetrate and kick, Sellers to Steins, and that jump shot is so pretty from Steins. And no stagnation. Nobody is just standing in one spot the whole time. They're attacking the glass. They know their advantage is rebounding here. And Seattle U probably going to get something from their coach saying, we've got to box out next time out. Oh, the pick. And El Ladine off to the races. She'll cash it in, and it is total Washington domination. 16 to 1 here in Seattle. Sellers pressing up defensively. Look at her move those feet. 
Oh, now Daniels comes away with the pick, and she's all alone. The lefty puts it in. And the Huskies have absolutely come out like Tina Langley had hoped with some intensity, with some fire on both ends of the floor. What a start for the dogs. Yeah, the ball pressure started right there with Savia Sellers and Delea able to deny, push up a little bit. And right here too, I mean, it's Ella Dean here. They're doing the same thing where they're putting pressure on the perimeter, making it uncomfortable for the passer. So they're just trying to get rid of it, and then that Husky defender is able to deny, and they're going full speed the other way. You love their aggression because they're speeding up Seattle U in every form of what Seattle U wants to do. And a couple of picks and then wide open layoffs. It's a 16 to nothing run over three minutes and 41 seconds. And it's been good defense. Savia Sellers already with three assists here in the first five and a half minutes of action. I loved her intensity. She got better as last year it went on in her true freshman season. And she's got that energy level that's infectious. Underneath won't go for Tamia Strickland. And another rebound. This time it's McDonald running. And she gets her first bucket as a Husky. And love how she turns and points on the good pass from uh, El Ladine. And you've just got really good guards for the Huskies this year. A lot of them that came in last year like Savia. And like Chelsea with a bridge right here who's going to get another steal. Just the aggression and somebody's always running out. Sellers gets taken to the deck, draws the foul. But again, good defense applied by Washington. And then the kick up pass. Now with Shayla Gilmore on to the, or Gilmer, excuse me. Onto the floor, the 6'1 junior out of San Clemente, California. And the perfect pass from Chloe, Chloe Briggs there. Savia getting out in transition. That's just something we hadn't seen as much of last year is the ability to pass that, right? And have it perfectly on target. Somebody, a willing catcher, someone who's going to fight to catch that and finish in transition. We're seeing it, just a different mindset of a Husky offense right now. Savia Sellers last year, a 74% foul shooter. But with her quickness and ability off the bounce, you'd imagine she could get to the line with regularity this year. She went to the line last year as a true freshman 31 times. I expect that number to rise this year with her ability to penetrate. Pac-12 all freshmen. A few Huskies were honorable mention within the Pac-12 last year. Deep three, no good, and bounces into the Husky bench. And Seattle, U, Seattle U comes in here hungry. Look, they haven't beaten the Huskies often. They've got three wins all time against the Huskies. Only one ever in Seattle, and it's been decades. So they're coming in here hungry. Maybe some of these kids weren't recruited by UW and wanting to just get after it. And I think as they get more looks inside and take their time, going to come for him. That was a good defensive stand by Seattle U. Chloe Briggs putting the ball on the deck and the defense surrounds her. Three black jerseys collapse. Yeah, once you bring the ball down and you're in the middle, uh, it's against a zone that's wanting to be aggressive. Skyler Young wants his team to play fast and furious and they collapse quickly. A 20-0 Husky run out of the gates. One point allowed. And the traveling violation will give it back to Washington. One point allowed through the first seven minutes to start the 2024 season. This Husky team knows scouting reports like no one better. I mean, they're just we, how many times did we see last year them taking down bigger opponents because everybody knows how to play each offensive player and take away their strengths. It's a great job scouting by Tina Langley's staff. We mentioned the four top 25 victories last year for the Huskies. Five on the shot clock. They're going to have to pull the trigger. Chloe Briggs, the sophomore, knows the situation but can't draw a rim and a shot clock violation. The new Huskies on the floor right now in place of the starters. Tegan Brown defensively will set the point. Shayla Gilmer is mentioned along with Chloe Briggs, Brennan McDonald. So the only starter on the floor right now, Hannah Steins for Washington. Turn and go. 
Kazlova has not been shy. She's been trying to generate some offense. Brown not shy either all the way to the hoop. Can't get it to go, but Gilmer with the follow. The rebounding has been complete domination. 14 to two, the Washington Huskies snagging 14 of the first 16 available rebounds in this game. Yeah, and in terms of offensive rebounds, they dominated there too with five. They're getting a lot of open looks and Shayla Gilmer following the missed shot of Tegan Brown, but that's not even a missed re a shot if Tegan Brown isn't aggressive and takes it close to the rim. So Shayla Gilmer is someone we really loved to watch last year in energy just Energizer Bunny. She's always near the ball, always diving somewhere. Gotta love her energy if you're Tina Langley. Another substitute onto the floor for the Huskies. Olivia Anderson, number 23 in white, the 6'6 sophomore out of Ellensburg, Washington, as Gilmer, the junior, knocks in the first free throw. And pretty rotation for her from the free throw line, and the 6'1 junior goes two for two. And a hint of full court pressure there from Tegan Brown. Both teams probably trying to see and fit and try out a bunch of different things in this first game. Pressure applied by Anderson. And Seattle U again cannot get the bucket. Brian too strong. And then the follow shot is good by Sheridan Leggett. And here you go. Here comes the pressure trapping on the wings now out of this zone. The floater from Anderson, too strong, and then Briggs hustling to keep the play alive. Tegan Brown all the way in, draws contact. I like that going all the way in, not pulling up, draws the contact. Otherwise, you're taking a four to five foot shot from the baseline, not an easy shot to make. Instead, she's getting to the free throw line and almost had a shot at man one kind of play. Tegan Brown, the 5'10 junior out of Sacramento, California. Oak Ridge High School has played some valuable minutes in her first two seasons off the bench for Tina Langley and crew. And the Huskies perfect from the line to start this season. Five for five, and Brown knocks in the second. Another pretty stroke at the foul line from the Huskies. 26 to three for Washington in this cross city rivalry. Kazlova gets the green light, gives it a go and too much. Huskies corral the rebound. From the corner, Brown left open, draws iron. And the rebound taken from Bryan. Rodriguez, short. Oh, we're getting our conditioning in. Anderson with the rebound. Yeah, early in the season, your lungs <laughs> will start to burn a little bit. The adrenaline going and getting in game shape. Oh, yeah. Briggs penetrates. And the Red Hawks with the deflection come away with a steal. Pull up jumper from Moore off the mark. Huskies can settle for the final possession here if they choose just a short difference between the game and shot clock. What a first quarter it has been. The Huskies on pace for 100 here in game one. And if this score continues, they would give up 12 total. It has been a dominating first frame. Steins. No good, 1.8, make it 1.7 on the game clock. The Huskies with a chance for a final shot here is the true freshman, the only freshie on the Husky roster, Devin Coppinger. She's a good one out of Everson, Washington, Nooksack Valley High School. Gilmore at the buzzer, connects. An exclamation point on to an outstanding first quarter for the Washington. Broke it. Boy, what an outstanding uh, group of scores there. Kelsey Plum and Caitlin Clark. Kelsey, 3,527 career points. And that jersey retirement ceremony as 10 will be lifted to the Raptors will be against Purdue on January 18th. So make sure for those in the area and for those that want to travel out, should be a special night for Washington Athletics. Olivia Anderson, a nice soft touch for the sophomore. Yeah, I think Kelsey would be proud of what's going on right now with her Huskies. A 30-3 lead. 
She'll be the first ever women's basketball player with her jersey retired here at Washington. She was at the football game as the Huskies defeated USC and was saying, I can't believe it's happening this soon. She's pumped about it. But Pat Chun, athletic director, called her and, of course, to take him up on that opportunity. Had a chance to say hi to her quickly at the football game as Washington was able to beat USC on Saturday. Did a really nice job, had that jersey retired. A football jersey that was framed and given to Kelsey, invited some of her old teammates back and put them in the suite. Looked like they were having a really good time. It's awesome to see nothing better than getting together with your old teammates oh. and uh, hanging out. Truly, there's nothing sweeter. That basketball can do so much for you. Both of these teams right now experience it. The takeaway from Tegan Brown, four on two. Daniels left hand leaves it short. I think might have got a piece of it was Kazlova, the 6-1 grad student. That's two great athletes going at each other. But again, Tegan Brown, the anticipation, getting it up to Delaya Daniels. And everything has been going in layup-wise for the Huskies. So I, I think Delaya was just thinking that it's going to be kind of an easy pass. But Kuslova right there to block the shot. And again, a Big Ten caliber player in Kuslova. Coppinger loses control, taken away by the Red Hawks. Moore working on El Ladine. Three ball rolls in, and finally the Red Hawks get in the bounce. Olivia Moore, the redshirt sophomore out of Spokane. And that looks like a shot she has made a lot in her career. Had all the confidence to take it. The early ones just weren't going. And what a lift for Seattle U. You doubled your point total right now. And after the made bucket, Seattle U applying the pressure and they get the trap to Daniels just as she crosses half court, forcing the traveling violation. So the Red Hawks will get it back. And I'm sure Coach Young was saying, we've got to stop turning the ball over. In that last timeout, seven turnovers already by the Seattle U Red Hawks. And not just turnovers, but live ball turnovers. A lot of fast break, wide open layups. And back to back buckets after the strong take finished by Edo Paibe. Beautiful take from the freshman out of Naples, Italy. More pressure applied. It's like a 1 2 2 by the Red Hawks. Daniels has it. But 10 seconds taken off the shot clock. Ladeen, three ball. Good. Huskies take advantage of the pressure. Overcompensating, you're going to find the open woman if you keep moving the ball around. And you could see Savia kind of pointing over, get it to L, get it to L, and she got it over. Ball squirts free, lands in the lap of Kazlova, and she puts it in. So three possessions. Successful for the Red Hawks to start this second quarter, putting up more points already than they did the entire first frame. A new lineup here for Washington. They try to figure out. Ladine pulls it from deep. Coppinger had it. The mid range jumper won't go. Tracked down by Ladine. Nearly tied up and a little extracurricular there as both players fighting for the basketball. You see Washington get multiple offensive rebounds on another possession. Seattle U playing a zone here. And balls up for grabs, I guess. They're, these are two passionate players. We know Ella Dean is a passionate player. <laughs> Early on in the season, you're excited to go against somebody else other than your own teammates, all right? That's, that's just gonna happen. And those are two competitive athletes. But the vulnerability of a zone is offensive rebounding. Huskies are taking advantage with nine. So the tie-up possession arrow to Seattle U. So a bit of a run here to start the second quarter by the Red Hawks. Tina Langley has been playing a lot of different players. Want to get a lot of minutes here in game one. Eke, beautiful catch in traffic on the feed from Ladine, and Tyra Eke puts it in. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Eke. It just going full speed, stopping. Tiny pivot, doesn't overcomplicate it, and a soft finish when you're going that hard. 
Sheena Langley talked about Eke's athleticism, and that certainly was on display. And the pass to our officials squirts out of bounds. <laughs> I think out of the corner of her eye, you see the black of the official, the pants and the shirt. Seattle, you wear those black jerseys, and peripheral vision sometimes isn't what you need, and that pass went into the stands. I have made some very nice passes to referees in my day. <laughs> yeah? Very nice. And were they wearing stripes or were they wearing black? <laughs> I mean, because Idaho was black, black and gold, yeah. so I'm giving you the benefit of the yeah, doubt Yeah, thank there. you. Okay. I appreciate that. All black right. pants, those kind of days. Sure, yeah. It happens. The lob pass too strong from Chloe Briggs. Pat taps her chest as my bad. She was trying to find Eke. And the turnover gives it back to Seattle U. Pull-up jumper, Kazlova. Eke takes the carom. Ladine feet set on the wing and rolls it in. That is quick strike offense by Washington. And it really challenges you as a defense when you're trying to get back from a shot, a long shot rebound. It's a tough thing to defend. And right now the Huskies are excelling in transition offense. Ladine three made threes on her first four attempts of the season. You gotta love that. She's hit three of them. Steins has hit one of them. And Savia Sellers, five assists after that one to El Ladine. Such good court vision. And Tina Langley told us last year she's got good court vision. She was just catching up with the system early on as a freshman. And man, she caught on quick. A little pushing and shoving by Seattle U and Washington in the stack line. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Just yeah, physical. It's usually when you can get away with a little bit of extra. Good hands tipped away, deflected, and Ladine comes away with it. And sent to the deck. She will draw the foul. So five, make it six whistles against Seattle U, their sixth foul of the game. Washington with just two. They've been very clean, but in this quarter, just one foul apiece. And look, Seattle U is going to get back into this game by pestering you, by trying to get under your skin, make you mad, be physical. So it's, it's on Washington to stay composed. And the pass intercepted. Leggett has it. Deflected away from her and now tipped out to Moore. Inside, Brian working on Eke, loses the handle, and Washington forces another turnover against the Redhawks. 12 turnovers already. The Washington defense has forced. And great post defense, great guard defense on guards trying to post up. Seattle U has done a lot of pivoting and trying to get around defenders. The Huskies haven't fouled, and they've made it hard to get a shot up over them, just using their length, being smart. Great position inside by Eke. Fantastic job shielding off the defender, but not extending that left arm. Those are two strong players going at it, and that's the smarts, the intelligence, the basketball IQ of Eke. So El Ladine with double figures. She's got 11 points already in this one. She will get a breather. So three starters on the floor for Washington. Daniels, Eke, and Sellers, along with Briggs and Brown. Trying to find the holes in this zone. Sellers from the corner. Her three is not good, and Seattle U has the ball. Sellers strips and off to run again. Daniels, too much. But look at the number of white jerseys in the paint there to clean it up. That's the effort and conditioning. And Tegan Brown with the up fake too, not trying to go immediately up, let the defender pass. Easy layup. Nine different Huskies are in the scoring column. And another one right here. Look at this fast break bucket. Chloe Briggs. 
into the scoring column now on another pretty pass in transition. And shooting just under 50%. 48.4 from the field right now are the Huskies because of so many baskets in transition. They're getting up the floor so quickly and so efficiently. Into the lane on the back door cut. Brian leaves it off the mark. Sellers again looking up. Head up to Briggs. Pass deflected and Seattle U wants to run. Sellers. Hand up, doesn't matter. Olivia Moore puts it in. Moore with five points, leads all scorer for the Red Hawks. Daniels takes her time on the right side of the rim. And Daniels now with eight points, four for seven from the floor along with three boards. Husky defense, player to player in this first half has done a nice job applying pressure. Brian, baseline. Daniels rips the board and looks to run. Take it away. It was really the first shot by Seattle U where they penetrated and popped out and got a pretty open look. That was probably the most open look from a mid-range standpoint that they've gotten against the, these Huskies. Putting her head down, Olivia Moore driving against the pressure of Sellers. And uh, Sellers called for the body foul. So that ball, or excuse me, that foul called on the floor. So that brings us to a timeout. 44 to 12, the Washington Huskies looking good in their season debut. Arena, what a season debut for the Washington Huskies. They jumped out to a first quarter lead of 28 to three. They have continued to roll, but Seattle U has been better here in the second quarter. 16 to nine is the advantage in the second quarter for the Huskies. This is Tina Langley in her fourth year on Montlake. Preps the Huskies for their first season in the Big Ten Conference. The Pac-12 Conference last year with so many quality teams, seven made it into the NCAA Tournament. And two more made it into postseason play. Washington, one of those that made it into the WBIT. And so nine of 12 made it into postseason play. A very difficult league to earn wins in. The Huskies with a winning record at 16 and 15. 
as they enter Big Ten play for the first time this season. And again, some outstanding teams in Big Ten play. Watch USC and UCLA today in Paris. They both got wins against top 20 opponents. And the USC and UCLA, both top five in the nation. And the two that were predicted to battle it out for the Big Ten crown this year. It's going to be a fun conference and getting to play in those arenas. The Ohio State, or, you know, I mean, just so many beautiful spots. Devin Coppinger with her first ever field goal as a Husky. A 5'10 freshman put in a lot of buckets in her high school career. Yeah. But she'll never forget the one wearing the purple and gold to get it started here as a dog. Two state titles for Nooksack Valley, two MVPs at the 1A level four-star recruit she can jump right in she's got the kind of body and the athleticism to make an impact early I don't think she's been scared of the weight room there she is right nope. here already looks like she's plenty strong enough to compete here at the power five level here's Coppinger from three just short Tegan Brown fighting for the board but it's the Red Hawks pulling away more on the move make it Liggett Huskies out rebounding Seattle 27 to 7 right now. The lefty, Strickland, not enough on that shot. Hannah Stein's ball in her hand, head up, feeds Brown, and she'll take contact. Another brilliant job of moving quickly from defense to offense to get an open look. Yeah, this is exactly the kind of reps you want. I'm sure that Tina Langley and her staff have been repping transition like crazy in practice. There are a scary amount of transition drills you can do in practice, just ask my former coach. But you're seeing it really play out here on a court against a Division I team. The Huskies are just so precise with their passes. We haven't seen an errant pass. And I think the fact that they're running the floor is really going to be key to opening up every other part of their offense. Well, the Huskies continue to be perfect at the free throw line. Eight for eight, Tegan Brown is four for four for six points for the Husky Junior. And Gilmer gets her hands on that one, nearly another pick. We get no good on the three ball and McDonald Pulls it away. Here's Gilmer from three, and she hits it. Shayla Gilmer putting up the three ball sign to her team on the bench. They all get up and cheer. Love the smiles. And it's because they ran again in transition, got the ball inside. So that Shayla was pretty wide open out on the three-point line. Well, Shayla Gilmer last year 0 for 2 from deep. So, you know, that's got to feel good to knock that one in. I'm going to check. That might be her first career made three. But Tina Langley has talked about how she wants more of a positionless offense where your front court players can handle the ball and shoot from deep. They've run a lot of Princeton offense in the past, but this year it's going to be more read and react. Yeah, not almost everybody can be an outlet in terms of getting the rebound out and going. That means you have to have a lot of good ball handlers, and she does. Brown, money from deep. The Huskies have found the open player against this zone, and they've now hit six threes here in the first half. They've made six of their last seven shots in general. Seattle U tries to answer at the buzzer, no good. So the Washington Huskies, 28 points in the first quarter, 26 points in the second quarter, and they will head to halftime with a commanding defense has just made Seattle U take tough shots. One for 12 from three are the Red Hawks. Well, some of the stats that were on that graphic at halftime, the Huskies, six. And the Huskies out rebounding Seattle U 29 to 8. Just a dominant first half for Washington, but they turn it over on their first possession, so the Red Hawks will come back with it. 
Bryant inside, good give and go, but Chazlova can't hit the jumper inside the lane. And Daniels, her long range J off the mark. And that's what it seemed like the Huskies do. Great shot there by Kozlova, great play drawn up by coach Skylar Young. But they rush you and they make you think you don't have as much time as you do. Split in the defense going all the way to the rim, Sydney Rodriguez, the six foot true freshman out of Boise, Idaho. Yeah, I know Coach Young was excited to get her in the program. He's recruited her out of Boise for a long time, even he, when he was still at Portland as an assistant. The pilots were really successful while he was an assistant there. Skyler Young in his second year at Seattle U. The man in charge of at Seattle U, as you mentioned, at Portland, 2018 to 2023. Two WCC tournament championships in his time on the staff of the University of Portland. Yeah, I can't believe, I was kind of surprised Sabia made this pass, but it was a great cut because El Ladine was kind of asking for it in the deep corner from three, and then Delea kind of cut short corner. Sabia made the quick, concise pass through the defense and got to the foul line. Delea Daniels last year, a 64% foul shooter. And that one rolls around and in. And I think that's one area of growth for Delea that could really help the Huskies' chances. They would love to see her get to the free throw line as she is so aggressive, but then be able to shoot at a higher clip than 64%. She splits the pair. And Seattle U will try to attack this Washington's defense that has been impenetrable. I'm excited to see what Delea can do in this offense and a change and then also playing more of the four rather than the five. Anna Steins grabs the rebound two on two, kicks it to Ladine, and did not get her legs underneath that one. Anna Steins coming away with the rebound though and a foul on the ground. That's Ladine's first miss three of the game. She started off hot. Oh, correction, she's three of five. It's three of four in the first half. Ladine puts it on the deck this time, scoops it, but does not get enough on it. Three ball. Good. That one from Rodriguez. So five second half points for the freshman. Sellers takes it all the way herself. Just a great take. Saw wide open space, but on the other end, a great move by Rodriguez. Saw the defender go underneath that first staggered screen, and she was lights out. Sellers six assists, and now four points to go with it. She has been creating opportunities for her teammates. Leggett pops it out to Brian, rejected. And traveling the violation, Anna Steins getting out there and taking away the shot opportunity. And Eke, I believe that's her first block as a Husky. Remember, she led the MAC in block shots last year, averaging two a game, and I believe 2.3 in conference play. Get used to seeing a lot of that. The Spanish native out of Madrid, six foot three inch senior, number 30. Two in white, down low right there with a pretty jump hook. Soft touch by the senior. And post to post, I love seeing that. Oh, Sellers read that beautifully, just could not quite haul it in. So aggressive, I just love her get off. I mean, she sees it and she just chases it down. Averaged five steals a game as a senior in high school in Alaska. I will never get over that stat. Averaging also 26 points a game. An incredible product out of Alaska and three-time state champion at the 4A level and the all-time leading scorer in the history of the state. And remember, Alyssa Peely is from Alaska. The Red Hawks trying to run and they finish the O-board opportunity. Daniels wants to run and she flips it up off glass on the reverse. The fundamentals right there by Delea to just quash any momentum that Seattle U might have gained by that transition bucket. She kept her feet static, but then just one little pivot and she's on the other side of the rim. She's got the length 
and the patience, and again, that touch around the rim as a fifth-year player. Up and in for Sheridan Leggett. The 5'9 redshirt sophomore out of Mapleton, Utah with the bucket. And then Ladine steps on the sideline for the turnover. And the Redhawks expect a lot out of Leggett this year. They didn't get to see her last year because of injury. She played the year before that and she led the team with 41% from beyond the arc. So a timeout on the floor. And the Huskies here with the 61 to 24 lead here in the third. Welcome back to the campus of the University of Washington. These are the four starters returning from last year's team. Delaya Daniels, El Ladine, Hannah Stein, Savia Sellers, a senior, two juniors, and a sophomore, all getting quality minutes last year for the Huskies. Yeah, and right now, funny enough, El Ladine and Delaya Daniels each have 11 points, both leading the Huskies in scoring. Just the ability to come back. Tina Langley returned almost every single player that was here last year, except for one transfer. Everybody else wanted to come back. They bought in, they know what's going on here. They know the, the way this program is going and what they're capable of. But to have someone like Savia Sellers come back and enter that starting lineup with the experience she got last year, Hannah Steins, I, we haven't gotten to see as much of the court vision that she is capable of, but she's had some beautiful passes. Just having that experience of the D1 level at the Pac-12 level last year, Really impressive, and Ella Dean in her third year. Three ball left short by Kazlova. The Huskies have really extended her. She's just one of 10 from the floor. Sellers, three ball, short, underneath, rebound, and Tegan Brown with a new career high. She's in double figures. And she gets after the O boards. That's at least her second. The Huskies are really doing a good job chasing the glass. They're not afraid. They're not just running back. No one's lazy. They're attacking the glass. Kazlova off the mark. And the Huskies will run again off the miss. Here's Steins. Little stutter step. Now the ball movement. The fake by Brown. Add to that career high. Tegan Brown lighting it up today. A pass fake. Just get that defense to move an inch. And she created enough space for herself. That looked Ooh. Tegan Brown, 14 points. She's made two threes on three attempts. Steins with a lead pass. Sellers in front and another bucket in transition. A gorgeous dime drop from Steins to the running Sellers and the Huskies again. A 7-0 run just putting the gas pedal down. It's hard to get much prettier than this kind of offense. 
Hannah Stein's working it around. Tegan Brown, the defense running past her. See ya. Drano, Tegan Brown looking good right now. Huskies taking a big lead here at home. The Huskies jumping out to a great season debut. 11 players have played, everybody on their roster. All 11 have scored in a new career high for Tegan Brown, their junior guard. Really everybody contributing right now to this big lead. Yeah, I'd say the best summary is a 7-0 run over 51 seconds that you just watched heading into break. The Huskies getting good looks. They're pushing in transition. Tegan Brown is now the leading scorer with 14 points. But what's really important, the Huskies leading in points in the paint 32 to 14 they're just not accepting bad shots they're waiting for a good one but they're also just attacking the defense early when the seattle U defense isn't set yet and that's in transition good bucket out of the timeout that was sheridan leggett who put it in for seattle U. nobody in double figures yet for the red hawks Moore leading them with eight. Brown, 14 points. Can't get the 17th one to go. The corner pocket three ball just off the rim. And I think we just saw the IQ of Sadia Sellers. She noticed that Seattle U had an extra defender kind of chasing over, almost double teaming the ball, and recognized immediately, got it straight over to Tegan Brown for a great look in the corner. Well, the Huskies had to figure out where the cracks in the zone would be versus Seattle U, and they certainly have done a nice job of ball movement and getting open looks. Backdoor cut, nice play. Unable to finish, though, is Kazlova and McDonald. The Ivy League transfer from Yale with the rebound. Red Hawks continue this zone defense. Good cut, Coppinger, Ooh. extra pass down low. McDonald can't finish, grabs her own miss again, can't get it to go. Oh, that was pretty though. What a pass by Coppinger. Now she's d up, forces Leggett to pick up the dribble. Pressure coming, five second call and give Coppinger credit. Extended that defense, applied the pressure, and gave Leggett nowhere to go and no one to see. Or did they get a timeout before the five-second call? Okay, so the timeout called by Seattle U. They just have one timeout remaining with over 13 minutes to play in this game because of Coppinger's aggressiveness there. And everybody surrounding her, too, denying the ball. Once you get the ball in the corner, it's a defense's dream. If you pick up your dribble, everybody else around you denies the ball, and you've got nowhere to go. Great stretch by Coppinger, though. She turned her whole family into Huskies. A lot of Cougs in her family. 
Washington overall, the state of Washington, a lot of fans in there, but uh, her grandpa in particular apparently changed his cap out. A Coug hat for a Husky <laughs> hat to watch his granddaughter play for the purple and gold. Nothing more special though, to see her daughter play Division One basketball. Well, what a high school career that she had. Lydia Nooksack Valley to a 1A state title, the first in her high school's history. And then choosing to stay in the state of Washington and attending the University of Washington, Everson, Washington. I got to admit, I've been to a lot of places over the state. <laughs> I have a Harley. We go to all different <laughs> corners of the state. I've never been to Everson, Washington. You have Nooksack a Harley? Valley High School. Yeah. You got a Harley. Yeah. I, I'm learning something new about you today. Road Absolutely. King Classic, baby. Let's go. Incredible. <laughs> But well, it looks some, like you have a new destination There's to go some to. great rides out in the state of Washington is my point. I don't know where Everson is on the <laughs> map. And I will do my homework to the Coppinger family. I will figure out where Everson, Washington is before the next broadcast. I mean, Nooksack Valley alone, I know it's the high school, but that sounds like somewhere you got to visit. Seattle U, again, out of the timeout, <laughs> able to get the bucket, and now they'll extend the full court press. Here is Coppinger. Double team comes. And pass intercepted. Trying to score off of the press. And instead they draw the foul. It's Sheridan Leggett. If you're Skyler Young, you want to see your team with this kind of effort. Late in a game where you're down by 40. The effort, I mean, Seattle U not giving up here. Pressing, flying around, trying to finish, trying to rebound. Ooh, good crossover by Sellers. Oh, man. Losing the one defender. An extra defender comes. It's not enough. Sellers all the way. Showing off her speed. Just the deceptiveness, the misdirection, and the sight to get all the way to the rim and know that nobody's going to stop you. Loved that play by Sellers. She just looks so much more calm and confident now in her second season here at Washington. It takes a while for freshmen just to learn the speed of play. Good take and finish by Leggett. Really nice take. Kind of showed the cross we just saw a little bit <clears throat> to get into the key and a tough finish. Now Seattle U is Played neck and neck with Washington here in the third quarter. It's 16 to 15, UW's advantage. But Coppinger, three ball, nothing but net. The true freshman making an impact here in her first game. The kind of confidence you want to see. She sees the wide open shot. Don't give it up. Take the shot. The first made three of her career. And Sellers with the rip. And the run and the finish. Sellers. Seven assists in this game, and now make it double figures with 10 points. Outstanding start to her sophomore campaign. The Huskies now have 16 points off Seattle U turnovers. Kazlova continues to fire too much on that one. Back rim, and the Huskies run. Brown, feet set, rotation bit too much off the back iron. And McDonald fighting for the rebound. Deflected off a of Red Hawk, so UW will have another crack at it. I think Tina Langley, as she's going through film tomorrow or the next day, they're, they're really going to be happy with how these three-point shooters are not rushing their shots. And obviously, the steals turning into easy buckets are always wonderful to see from Savia Sellers, who has 10 points. But all these three-point shooters are not rushing their shots, even when they're in transition and they know the defense is sprinting over to them. Gilmer trying to skip it with her offhand. Deflected. Time running down. Ladine knows it <laughs> and hits it. She's got such a knack. Just a scores touch to be able to off balance, throw that up and in. I don't think anybody loves seeing a shot clock winding down more than Ella Dean. That's a great point. Left foot, floater, just money. And now less than 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. Ladine with the pressure. Kazlova 
Draws the contact and she'll head to the line. Kazlova has just been ice cold to start this season. Just one of 14, 0 of seven from deep. And the grad student out of Moscow, Russia continues to try to hit the mark. And let's see it over and over again. The left foot sticking out like Dirk Nowitzki, fade away. El Ladin, the national freshman of the week after a big game against Stanford in her first season on Washington, showed you the kind of potential as a scorer. Played just free that day and knocked off the top 10 Stanford Cardinal. And that will do it for the third quarter. 77 to 32, the Washington Huskies lead the Seattle U Red Hawks against Siena. Eastern Washington the following week. Cal State Fullerton on November 21st. All of those you can catch right here on Big Ten Plus. So the Huskies try to close this season debut off. Olivia Anderson can't get it to go, but El Ladin there to pick it up and put it in. El Ladin now 13 points, five of eight from the floor. All 11 Huskies have scored. And really just dominated the offensive rebounds as well with 14. Good backdoor cut, Kazlova left hand scoop is in. And good for her to see that go down. She's had a lot of really nice cuts on offense and just hasn't been able to finish at the rim. Coppinger will take it herself. Double team comes. Handled the pressure with ease. Anderson, ball on the deck, squeezes it through the double team, too strong. And the Red Hawks will try to run off that rebound. Ladine fights over the top of the screen. Not a lot of room, and that jumper misses everything. Good defense by Ladine, not getting picked. And the fact that this Husky defense is playing as hard as they are on defense. I mean, I know it's the start of the fourth quarter. You always want to play hard. But when you're up by this amount, it is easy to take shortcuts and maybe forget some of the scout, go under a screen. Not this team. El Ladine fighting over every screen that she's supposed to. Ladine, three ball, you bet. That's her fourth made three of the game, and she is up to 18 points. Just offense, just what, what doesn't impress you about the Husky offense right now. They're doing everything, moving the ball well, making good decisions. Maybe more turnovers than they'd like right now with 16, but they're still pushing and transitioning, just getting so many good looks. Hard take into the lane by Olivia Moore, and she will draw the foul and head to the line for two shots. The pass fakes, I mean, shifting the defense right there by Shayla Gilmer. Decided not to pass it into the high post because the defense was right there. Getting it out to Ella Dean, always a pretty good option. Anytime she's standing on the court, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, she can hit by just about, just about <laughs> anywhere. It's a good start, though. It's, you always like to play with house money, and so when... You have a shooting night like Ladine. She is 7 of 10 from the floor. It's just nice to get into the books, have an efficient night, have a productive night as well with the 18 points. And you'd rather be that than in the hole trying to chase a field goal percentage, just like a hitter in baseball or softball. Double team comes quickly to Ladine, and then she is no timeout by Tina Langley. Would have been a tie-up situation, and Seattle U has the possession arrow, so a good timeout from Tina Langley right in front of her was the, the near tie-up. And so 7.46 remain here between the Huskies and the Red Hawks. We'll be right back.
42 to 36 is our score here as we've got 746 left in the ball game. El Ladeen averaging just a tick under 12 points last year, starting her junior season with a bang, 18 points, seven attempt from the floor. She's made four threes on six attempts. She's had a really good floor game too. Yeah, we've really seen so many impressive starts by El Ladeen. She was the best guard in the class of 2022. 53 overall prospect by ESPN 100 when she was coming into Washington. But we heard Tina Langley tell us earlier today when we talked to her that Ella Dean is a great bucket there by Olivia Anderson, a nice feed by Chloe Briggs. That Ella Dean, Hannah Steins, and Savia Sellers spent a lot of time together working on footwork in a gym together this offseason. And you can see their chemistry, the way that they've all improved so much. This entire team, everybody coming back, the standard was to get a lot better. Oh, I like that move. Patient, using the footwork, Candy at Opaive. Gorgeous, a little up and under with a little extra sauce on it. Chloe Briggs, the southpaw, breaks the pressure off the dribble. Olivia Anderson, catch in traffic, can't get that one to go. Had a really nice move in the last possession. She kept it high, too. You love to see that as a post coach. Kick out, three ball short. Ladeen tracks it down. Wants to run, two on one. Kicks it to Briggs. And they will call her for the offensive foul. See how you're trying to get into a position where they can take a charge. Now, there is Might no longer a restricted that's true, area. That's true. <laughs> a couple years ago, that certainly would have that's been right. a block. Tried to get her feet set, take the contact. Another strip by the Washington defense. This time it's Briggs who has it. Pressure coming, getting hounded. Double team there. And they said that she slides her pivot foot for the travel. Yeah, so frustrating to get defense coming at you from all angles. And yeah, Chloe Briggs, a little frustration there. She's up to six turnovers in the game. She's a player very high IQ. And just getting hounded that time with the double team. Had nowhere to go. Nadine, hands up. 5-11, shoots over the top, and Seattle U with another bucket. Pretty move, Koslova using her length there. And it's good experience for Washington to go against this kind of pressure. I mean, Seattle U is not the tallest team they're going to face, but they're not super small for any mid-major team by any measure. So to face this kind of pressure is good experience for them. Huskies break pressure. Anderson had it underneath, just couldn't get it to go. And this is good experience here for Washington as Seattle U is absolutely selling out double, double team on the ball and Washington is having to navigate their way through this pressure. Yeah, continuous ball movement. You don't want to dribble through it too much, especially with the ball handlers they have throughout their bench. Very deep bench guards. And Seattle U continues a strong fourth quarter. Three ball, good, 84-43. Tamia Strickland, Seattle prep grad, went to France, Fresno State, decided to come back home to play for Seattle U. And an offensive foul called against Washington. Chloe Briggs thought she turned the corner, but instead, I believe it was a moving screen. That's a tough spot to try and set a screen. I don't know if it was maybe a, a brush screen that they're called, almost like a rub route they'll call. <laughs> I thought it was against El Ladine, but I do not see a foul called against her. Let's see if we can track down who that foul was against. My apologies. They called it against Olivia Anderson, so. Screen against Anderson. So Seattle U will continue to extend this pressure. And this is really good learning experience. Toppinger, the true freshman, 
You got to know when you hit a certain spot, that double team will come to you. And she, again, breaks it easily. Pretty unfazed. Showed off the ball handling there by Coppinger. Coppinger takes the extended arm and will draw the foul. Huskies defense has been pretty clean. They've only committed nine fouls. Seattle U just 12 themselves as we approach the five minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Tegan Brown, 14 points, a career high. Gets it inside to McDonald and they will say that it was a held ball possession arrow to Seattle U. I like the look from three that Brown had there in the corner. But at this point, you are trying to move the ball, try to involve your teammates. It's unselfish play. A 7-0 Seattle U run over the last two and a half minutes. Washington contributing three turn turnovers during that stretch. And another nice speed in the lane. Can't come down with it. And finally, McDonald pulling down the board and a foul called against Seattle U. That is Brenna McDonald, 6'3 grad student out of Natick, Massachusetts. Never been there either. <laughs> Take I your Harley out to Natick, I, Massachusetts. I, I might. I, 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 I will say that I, I did pull out my maps during the last break. <laughs> Everson, Washington is right up near Linden, Washington, near the Canadian border. I have been to Linden many times. Cute little town. Yeah. Next time, I'm going to have to, you know, make the short drive over to Everson. See what's in Everson, Washington. A few miles west. Nooksox Valley High East. School for Devon. That there is you go. right up near the Canadian border for those of you not in the Pacific Northwest. Coppinger short on the three ball attempt, and it trails out of bounds. I have a feeling a lot of people from that area will be driving down to Seattle. Catch a lot of Devon Coppinger's games. I'm sure she just made that town so thrilled to get not just their first ever state title, but another one right after it. About an hour and 43 minutes is what it says it'll take to get there. And Seattle U continues to fill it up. A 10-0 run by the Red Hawks. And they have outscored UW 14-7 here in the fourth. Yeah, the Huskies 0 for their last four. Not getting the same easy looks. And a Stein cashes that easy look in. Just a simple pull up, Jimmy. Just so poised at the top. And the Huskies really do have some ball handling guards that can get into the lane, that penetrate and dish. Stein, Sellers, two of the best. Huskies called for the reach. So the fifth team foul against Washington will send them to the foul line. Two shots coming up. Yeah, Coppinger went for the up fake there, got a little bit behind, but it seemed like a typical contact on a drive. Seattle U clearly just being really aggressive. They're not just going to tuck and run and head back for home three miles away. They're going to put up a little bit of fight, show something to be proud of here on film at the end of the game and try to build after this. This is, a, this is a good Husky team that they're going up against. Again, beat four AP top 25 teams last year and returned eight players. Gosh, and I think with the 16 wins last year, there was a weekend in the desert. Two double overtime losses as Steins drills another triple. Her jumper tonight, she hasn't shot a lot of them. Six attempts, but she's made four of them. Two from deep. She's in double figures now. Her jumper has looked really good. That rotation has been beautiful. So smooth. And it looks effortless. Where It has always looked effortless, but even more so this year. That's another year in the weight room. That's another year of strength, another year of getting up more and more shots in the offseason. Ooh, fade away. Good looking shot there as Seattle U continues. Edo Paibe with the three ball and now the turnover. Yeah, she's really creating some opportunities for herself right now and had the up and under early. 
Seattle U defense. This is great experience for them too at this point to see what works against a good Husky team. What's going to work later in the season. They really do. I mean, they've got a lot of size, a lot of players over six foot or at six foot. Lengthy guards that can disrupt those passes and just blur your vision, make it harder to see your teammates. I asked Tina Langley when you and I were chatting with her before the game about what her rotation might look like. She says, I'd love to play all 11 players because they all have deserved it. They yeah. played really well. Well, she's got all 11 players in this game. Gilmer with the rejection. And all 11 have scored. Steins rushed that one just a bit. McDonald fighting hard. She's worked the glass today. Verna McDonald. In her first game wearing the purple and gold, and she's got seven rebounds, which leads the Huskies. Tyra Eke has six boards to go along with six points. The starter at the five spot today. Brown. There's McDonald down low. Kicks it out. Steins right in front of her bench, short. And the Huskies with the O board will re-rack. 15 on the shot clock. Got to move. Got to move around her. Briggs at the buzzer of the shot clock. One second remained, and the Seattle U defense could not get there in time. The foul called, and Briggs should have three free throws. Yeah, and you spoke to how many players have gotten in for the Huskies and scored. Uh, it's been so long since we've seen Delea Daniels. I mean, she has 17 minutes, but she hasn't had to play much because you're trying to build depth right now. Delea Daniels has all the minutes she could need in her career, and they've got to preserve her as they continue the season. But it's nice to see. I mean, what player stands out for not fitting in? That's exactly what Tina Langley is talking about. Everybody has deserved minutes right now, and everybody has worked their tails off in the preseason to make sure they look sharp. And they just look so sharp as a team, no matter what mixture of five players you have on the court. It hasn't been perfect by any means. They're obviously got, they're gonna have a long list of things to grow from, but it's about as good of chemistry as you could ask for from game one. Chloe Briggs, the sophomore out of Ontario, California, knocking in two of three free throws, missed the first, and then nailed the second and third. Tina Langley talking about the work that she put in on her shot. You can even see it on the free throw. Just elbow in, shot pocket a little higher. Working hard to be the best version of herself. A little push off down low as the McDonald tangling up with Christina Bryan, the 6'3 grad student out of Jamaica. And so... Christina Bryan will head to the foul line. Started her career at Arizona Western for a couple of seasons and then spent two years at Georgia State. And her free throw pops around the rim and won't go. That one is good. So Seattle U. The fourth quarter has belonged to the Red Hawks. They have outscored the Huskies 19 to 14. Although the Huskies with the 40 point lead, their first quarter, or their first half rather was dominant. Steins uses the Gilmer screen, left hand scoop. Gorgeous move by Steins. Just so smooth. I mean, switching from right to left and having the wherewithal to switch to that left at the last moment, kiss it off the glass. Hannah Steins has just been so much fun to watch as she's progressed in her career. Well, I think watching Hannah Steins as she's developed in her time, the one thing that I would say that has held her back is being too unselfish. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a great quality as a yeah. point guard, but sometimes it's when she puts her mind to it, she's had games where she's been unstoppable. And one that comes to mind was at Washington, Washington State, State. I was gonna being say the a ranked thing. team and just put the team on her back. But she's got that in her. And 
Tina Langley, of course, would love to see her junior point guard call her own number this season. Yeah, Washington State was down big at Washington State. And she was almost single-handedly helping come all the way back. Breaking through the pressure, good passing by Washington, and it leads to the open deuce by McDonald. And Delea has actually said that Brenna McDonald has given her some leadership advice, saying, be the leader you want to be led by. She mentioned that at Big Ten Media Days. It's cool to see another leader in this program. Here is McDonald grabbing another miss. She's been active on the board. She's got eight. And the Huskies can dribble this one out. Overwhelmingly, a good first game for the Washington Huskies. They came out and absolutely put the pedal down. 28 to three after the end of the first. And at the end of the game, it's nine.